It's no surprise that the murder rate and other violent crimes peaked under Trump and are falling under Biden. And now he's promising to use our own military to attack U.S. citizens. That's the tyrant. That's the tyrant he's telling us he'll be. And believe me, he means it. That was actor Robert De Niro outside of the New York courthouse where Donald Trump pretty soon this week will be hearing a verdict in his first criminal trial. And it's a huge deal. Closing arguments are starting today. We'll talk about the legal side of that with Aaron Parnas later on. But here, I want to show you some clips from this press conference outside of the courthouse. We've been seeing MAGA Republicans do these off-the-rails press conferences, but not very many anti-Trump folks have been doing it. And it's really good to see they are now. Robert De Niro, these January 6 officers, as you can see in the clips I'm going to play standing behind Robert De Niro, showing up to make sure the press isn't just hearing from these pro-Trump MAGA individuals and also hear the truth on some of these things. And so we'll walk through different clips. I'll show you officers, I'll show you De Niro, and then we'll get to Trump inside of the courtroom. But one of the points that you saw in that first clip up front, important, a lot of people don't remember this or understand it, huge spike in violent crime at the end of Trump's presidency, granted because of pandemic-related conditions, but he was wildly mismanaging those, so there should be some blame. And then Biden has overseen this huge plummet in crime, despite the right-wing narrative about crime in America. And right now, violent crime lower than it was even before the pandemic under Donald Trump, something Biden rarely gets credit for. So with that being said, here's more from Robert De Niro. Somehow, he even got self-styled patriots to support a man who called for terminating the Constitution and on January 6th rallied an angry mob to threaten democracy, leaving death and destruction in its wake. That's why I needed to be involved and wanted to be involved in the new ba Biden-Harris ad, because it shows the violence of Trump and reminds us that he'll use violence against anyone who stands in the way of his megalomania and greed. I'm going to really quickly pause your viewing of this video to ask you to subscribe to the YouTube channel by clicking that subscribe button to help us continue to grow. But it's a coward's violence. You think Trump ever threw a punch himself or took one? This guy who ran and hid in the White House bunker when there were protesters outside? No way. He doesn't get blood on his hands. No, he doesn't. He directs the mob to do his dirty work for him by making a suggestion, an inference, and his gang grovels and follows his obvious order. And you heard him mention the ad that he narrated for the Biden-Harris campaign, and I'll show you that ad again if you missed it, a really powerful one. But uh, it is important, I've said it so many times, I think that MAGA folks, Trump supporters, think that a second Trump term would look good for them, maybe bad for the people they hate. Now, I think there's an unfortunate aspect in their values to wanting to own the people they don't like, right? Own the libs and wanting to potentially watch Trump induce suffering for certain populations. But what they need to remember is Trump's also bad for you. And he is willing to benefit from your support for him, but not actually enact policies implement actions that could make your life better. And we looked at this clip in a past segment that was uploaded this morning on the channel about uh, Joe Scarborough being harassed by this Trump supporter. And the Trump supporter kept saying that Trump's going to get rid of liberals like you, get rid of them. And Trump posted that video on his true social account. Super scary. But in that, you're hearing what I'm talking about. They think, yeah, this might be bad for the people I don't like, but good for me. Let me tell you, the crumbling of American democracy, this incredible constitutional democratic process that Trump threatens, that would cause instability and a crisis across the whole world, especially in America, that would be disastrous for all of us. I wish I didn't have to convince you by just making it about you in particular, but even for you in particular, Trump supporters, this would be bad. And the continuation of American democracy is better for everyone except for maybe Donald Trump. Here's this ad that was referenced by De Niro. 
From midnight tweets to drinking bleach to tear gassing citizens and staging a photo op, we knew Trump was out of control when he was president. Then he lost the 2020 election and snapped, desperately trying to hold on to power. Now he's running again, this time threatening to be a dictator, to terminate the Constitution. If I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. Trump wants revenge, and he'll stop at nothing to get it. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Yeah, and it was mentioned in there, De Niro mentioned it previously. Trump called for the termination of the Constitution. That post is still up on his true social account. A massive fraud of this type of magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the Constitution. You can't run for president where you'll take an oath to the Constitution, calling for the termination of the Constitution, and be given that power by the American people. At least that shouldn't make any sense. And hopefully we won't allow that to happen. And the fact that people who spent so many years saying they were the most for the Constitution, that they're supporting this guy is pretty demented stuff. Here is January 6th police officer Harry Dunn also speaking outside of the courthouse. The fight for a lot of us didn't end on January 6th, that evening when we went home. The fight still continues now. What happened that day was an attempt to halt, to overthrow it, uh, an election. Donald Trump is the greatest threat to our democracy and the safety of communities across the country today. He has encouraged and continued to encourage political violence. We've been called traitors just today. We were all called traitors on January 6th for doing our job. And yes, we protected Republicans. We protected Democrats alike. It's not about the story that we don't agree with. Political violence is never acceptable. But you have a presidential candidate, you have a presidential candidate that champions it, that encourages it, that supports it. We cannot have that. He said Donald Trump is the greatest threat to our country. You also have Michael Fanon at this as well. And ah, people don't get it. People don't get it. And the ones that do... I don't even know what to say about them, but my hope is that if people understood, if they were informed on what Trump stands for properly and what Biden stands for, that this election wouldn't be close. And from conversations that I'm having, it seems like that is the reality for a lot of people. They're good people who maybe won't go vote because they don't quite get what's on the line. And so I'll keep saying to you every single day, two people is all I'm asking for my audience, two people inform them who you know aren't already understanding and they're not already motivated to go vote for Biden, explain to them once on the line, play them videos like this, someone who defended the Capitol on January 6th saying Donald Trump's the greatest threat to our country. Here's more from Robert De Niro. And that's why it's so weird that Donald Trump is just across the street because he doesn't belong in my city. I don't know where he belongs, but he certainly doesn't belong here. We New Yorkers used to tolerate him when he was just another grubby real estate hustler masquerading as a big shot, a two-bit playboy lying his way into the tabloids, pretending to be a spokesman, a spokesperson for himself. He was calling it as himself for himself to fool the press into inflating his net worth. A clown. But this city is pretty accommodating. We make room for clowns. We have them all over the city. People who do crazy things in the street, we tolerate it. It's part of the city, it's part of the culture. But not a person like Trump who will eventually run the country. That does not work, and we all know that. You know, he called him a grubby, <laughs> grubby is such a funny word, grubby real estate hustler masquerading as a big shot. And I will say, I think some people on the right wing like to think of Trump as this strong man, alpha male type of figure. And separate from the painting on of orange makeup every single day because of whatever reason and those sort of surface level things, remember Trump was so weak, and I'm not saying this to be insulting, sort of, uh, but he was so weak after the 2020 election that instead of being an adult and caring about his country and just saying, all right, I lost, I'm going to do what all these other presidents were able to do, all these other candidates 
across the country are able to do every single election and go, I concede. I want the best for this country. I'm going to help Biden transition into power and then uh, maybe even work with him to do the best things for the country. Instead, he tried to overthrow our entire electoral process to keep him in power because he was so sensitive and his fifis were hurt so badly that he lost that he had to create this alternate reality for himself and his followers to live in where he actually won the election based on no evidence. And that is strength masquerading as weakness. And that's what I don't understand uh, sort of why MAGA people don't see that in Trump, the profound insecurity and weakness. Here's, uh, let's see, the Biden campaign actually showed up outside the courthouse, which I was happy to see. I know it feels like, oh no, are you playing into the narrative of, they're going to say that this is a Biden witch hunt no matter what. But if all of the press, as this uh, Biden campaign official mentioned, is here covering this and only Trump gets to have the megaphone, no, they're going to show up too and they're going to get the correct message out. The contrast here pretty much writes itself. As we speak, Donald Trump somewhere uh, fighting for himself, maybe taking a power nap. Uh, and we've seen him for weeks and for months now. Uh, we've seen the ramblings of an unhinged, power-hungry, self-centered man, uh, both here at Mar-a-Lago, on True Social, wherever he may be. Uh, but the thing is, this isn't new for Donald Trump. It's how he spent his four years in the White House. It's how he spent every moment since he lost the 2020 election. And in one month, Americans are going to have an opportunity to witness in prime time the clear contrast between Donald Trump, who's a chaos agent waging a self-obsessed campaign of revenge and retribution, go up against Joe Biden, who's a leader who fights for Americans every single day. As the president said when he challenged Trump to debate, the president has a list of things he'd like to talk to Trump about if Trump does in fact show up in Atlanta on June 27th. You know, he said the contrast here pretty much writes itself as we speak. And I have to tell you, and let's just cross this bridge if we have to, okay? So let's not spend too much time on this idea and let's just work to make sure we don't have to cross that bridge. But if Trump were to win, my faith in the American people will have been thoroughly, brutally, indescribably, unexplainably abused and shook and so again i don't want to get there but the contrast is so clear and biden has this set uh, or uh, a list of policy achievements and a policy vision for what's ahead trump has fear-mongering sure hatred sure he does scream about problems but he doesn't have policy solutions to those problems in a meaningful sense he's not actually explaining to his supporters in a way that is at all valuable how he would improve even just their lives, not to mention the rest of the American peoples. Now we get to Trump inside of the courtroom, and he was a little bit confused. He does this thing as we watch where he reads articles from people who support him, trying to say these are legal experts who think this is a witch hunt. And trust me, don't go looking for this information, but just trust D-Man that uh, every other legal expert agrees with with these ones, the Fox News contributor legal experts, everyone agrees with them, okay? And here he had a tough time sort of reading through the article. Jonathan Durley, a classic closing pitch by the lawyers is to use a physical object like a three-legged stool. If any three-legged stool is missing and any leg is missing, the stool absolutely collapses. Even a cursory review of the evidence shows that this case does not have a leg to stand on. This is a case without a leg to stand on. This is John. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. What a metaphor, huh? If any three-legged stool is missing, <laughs> he says, if, if you don't have the stool, then the fact that it has three legs doesn't matter because it has zero legs because it's gone. I, oh, wait, no, I mean any leg. Oh, oh, if you have the stool but a leg is missing, then... It would fall down and then you wouldn't have a leg to stand on. I mean, the, the case one. I mean, the stool wouldn't have a leg. To, well, it has three, two legs. You get the point, okay? It's a good metaphor. Here's more from Trump. FEC Commissioner Bradley Smith's testimony would have established that Trump cannot have no fault, willfully violated FICA, that's Federal Election Campaign Act. Because NDAs are not campaign expenditures. You know, there's nothing wrong with an NDA. They're signed all the time by many, many companies. Uh, they sign them literally on an hourly basis. I feel like if this is going to be his way of campaigning for himself, he should read through these first 
and practice saying them because you really is having a tough time with the stool explanation and with the explanation there, then here's a little bit more. And I'm a gay I'm not allowed to speak. It's the first. No president has not been allowed to speak. He has spent hours and hours and hours speaking outside of the courtroom and at his rallies and everywhere. Truth socialing out the wazoo, as we've covered. He can speak. There's very specific things he can't do, like going after witnesses and intimidating witnesses. Oh my gosh, he's so victimized. Can you imagine? Let me know what you thought of that and tell me in the comments. This week, we're going to get a verdict, it seems. And if we do, what do you think the verdict's going to be?